Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Zanut here. And now we're going to get into uh, the uh, pump, mounting it, getting some tubing done, and then putting some uh, water blocks on the graphics cards. So with that, let's get ready to mount the uh, pump into the uh, pump top. So, well, before we mount the reservoir uh, and pump stand inside of the case, uh, I need to go in and install the pump into the, the pump top. Now, all I did was mock fit it so that we could get an idea and move it around easily but now what I need to do is I've got the uh, the mod top there's some extra foam that they give you and I purchased the the D5 pump I got was the XSPC model it's the uh, XSPC let's see here it's, it is just a D5 uh, like a Coolance PMP 450 or a Sys Swift Tech MCP 655 so this particular one comes just with the pump itself and the front, uh, you know, ugly factory style one, along with the O-ring that goes inside of that, that, uh, this piece here. We're not going to use that. We're going to use this. Then we have the O-ring that comes with the, uh, the pump top. And then they also give you, Bits Power gives you some tools here that you use to um, remove and, and the, the pins because in order to mount the uh, connector properly you actually have to feed the cables through one of these holes in the uh, pump top kit so in order to do that of course you're not going to be able to fit this through there or you're going to get the RPM cable through so what I have here is I have their tools but I also have my own um, tools that I bought from performance PCs. It's just a, uh, a bunch of companies make them, but uh, these are all uh, pin extractors and insertion tools. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and do that now. So let's get this guy out of the way and I want to depin these cables. Now these pins right here, you have the uh, power and ground for the pump. Um, basically Well, this tool does the job, so you just got to get it inside there, push the pin up, and it actually pushes it right through. So nice job. Just remember we had the yellow and the black. Just remember your pin assignments when you do that. And then we also have this RPM cable. And so this particular one they don't give you a pin for but I happen to have one right here to remove the uh, RPM pin what you do is inside the uh, area here where you can actually see it you use the tool to press down on this little flange I don't know if you can see that but there's a tiny little flange that will have to pop back up so you press it down and then you're able to get the uh, the pin out so basically just compresses it so then when we reinsert it um, it'll the pressure will pop back up actually you just went right back in so all you need to do is just put some pressure down on it and then and it bends the pins down and it slides right out so we have the connectors now removed from the uh, power and RPM signal pin and all we're going to do here actually is um, we're also going to sleeve this and I'm going to sleeve it with some uh, black sleeving. So let me go ahead and uh, break that out. And once we have it sleeved nicely, I'll then uh, feed it through the cap. And we will uh, reassemble the uh, pump inside the pump top. All right, we have the sleeving on the cable. Now this pump is going to be going down and these cables out the back, but you can see this is not the uh, darkest sleeving that uh, covers up the cables in the back. Um, I'm going to have to look into doing that. Uh, then of course that one little blue wire is very tiny. So 
All right, so we have here the pump, and then we're going to set it in here, but we need to get the, the washer. So the O-ring, so we lay the O-ring inside the uh, pump top. And what we're going to do is place the pump in here. And then what we do is we have the, uh, the ring. And although these, I have these separate because the RPM lead is going to go to the fan controller and then the other, the other one is uh, straight to the power. That's why they're split. And I need to put them through the same hole here because once it gets mounted on the top, it'll be in the same spot. So it's, it's easy to do. You don't have the pins in there and just get it snaked through. Okay. All right, now is where it gets a little bit tricky, where you have the heat shrink tubing. All right, when going through this, I realize it's much better to put the shrink tubing uh, on after you feed the cables through, especially uh, depending on the thickness of it. And since I am running both of them through the same uh, port on the back of the pump, which is uh, important, I think you, you have to do that. So anyway, so I've got that all situated. And now what I'm doing is I've got the, the, uh, the cap. So I got the pump laid in, got the, the washer inside of the, uh, inside of the uh, pump top. And now what I'm doing is I have the, the plate here lined up because this is a variable pump. And I need to be able to adjust the, the uh, pump speed. And you see there's the red line right now. It's set on uh, 5. So uh, I need to be able to adjust that. So I have to line it up just right. And now what I'm doing is tightening down the uh, rib cap. All right, now that we have the pump top on, the covers on, now I need to repin the connectors. So uh, in order to repin them on the pins here, you make sure that the uh, this little flange part of the pin is pulled up. The tool presses it down so you can slide the uh, the pins out and that's actually what causes the pin to um, to lock. So uh, now that I have them separated, I'm sliding them back in and they should, you might be able to hear it click. All right, and so there, there we have it. And then for this one, this one, you, it's, you just need to bend, get a little flex so that the, the pin uh, is, is not as compressed. So I had to compress it in order to remove it. Then you just slide it in and it too will lock. Oh, wrong one. There we go, have it locked. So we now have the pump sleeved. So it better is concealed inside the case when it runs out the back. Now I'm gonna do is mount the uh, stands back onto them. All right. All right, we have, so to mount the pump, we're gonna mount them with uh, these four screw holes on the bottom uh, with the rubber mounts attached to keep the vibration down. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and get the uh, get at least two of the screws started and then I'll tighten it down. I'm going to use um, some black black Pacific color black oxide coated screws. Alright so to secure the uh, stand to the base, hopefully there's enough clearance here, we'll find out. But I have uh, some nylon lock washers here and a flat washer through a black pan head screw. And so I've got them now, uh, I've got it mounted here. And this is, um, this is how it looks. Nice clean socks on that side. And same thing on this side right here. 
So now let's take it into the case and see if I can uh, mount the mount it to the right points inside of the case labs case over top of where the filler plate goes. All right, so we have the pump uh, ready to be mounted. They're going to be mounted now. Let's see if I can zoom this in here. I'm going to mount it right down on these plates here. So these are um, panels that come off and they're secured by four screws uh, where, you know, depending on how you wanted to lay out your case, you could put fans in there or a radiator in the bottom. Obviously, uh, you see my uh, radiator layout. But right here is a perfect place where this 120 uh, millimeter fan mount adapter is going to be um, placed. So this bracket with the pump will be secured down on these four screws. Now I hope uh, the screws are long enough. I believe they are. So what I'm going to do now is remove this plate and then we'll get the uh, pump mounted on there. Very good. One of the things I decided to do to give it a little bit of a cleaner look, I um, installed a couple of uh, black screws in the front two holes. So even though they're not doing anything there, uh, they look, you know, it looks a little bit cleaner rather than just having a couple of holes there. So now I'm going to position this over the spot that they'll be mounted to. And we'll start with the first one here, at least get it in. Going to mount the, uh, the base directly to it. Actually, let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so we have the pump stand, pump installed, and then the, the mod top. Pump stand mounted to the pump top and now to the bracket over the base in the spot where we want it have the uh, cable sleeved and running out the back for now and actually I had to put them on a little bit of an angle so right here if I need to remove the pump and adjust the uh, the voltage um, sorry adjust the RPMs or the speed of the pump right now I have it on set on three um, but I will wind up kicking it up to five because the Aquero is going to control it but just for feeding the loop um, when I first fill the loop, I don't want it on uh, extreme. So that's where we stand right now. Um, I think I might put the res on and take some pictures and then we're going to start uh, tubing. All right, so we have it now, the pump mounted. And there's plenty of space there. Looks like we're going to be okay with the cables coming out of the power supply and then bending through. And actually the cables from the pump there will be going right out that same spot. So. Uh, Though it'll look like I think we're going to be kind of clean back behind the pump there. Um, so looking good. I think now it's time to start uh, doing some running some tubing, and then we'll got to look at uh, mounting the water blocks on the uh, 680s. Fun stuff. All right, guys, I have the uh, some plugs that came in today from uh, Formus PCs. You notice, remember, these uh, right angle monsoons have a, uh, their light through port, so you can put a probe in one end or uh, the LED uh, lights like I have in the uh, reservoir, actually. I have that wired with an LED light. That sh we'll see how it does, but it should be shining uh, a wide light down into the coolant that's in there. Um, so these allow you to put a temp probe in them or the light plug in them or just a regular plug. Now, I bought uh, some some plugs and I got the black I got a couple of black and I also got a couple of uh, orange ones so here's a here's one with the black and I'm thinking uh, if I'm gonna put a light port in here and if it doesn't look good I'm gonna put a plug but on the uh, CPU blocks you can see I uh, added the CPU block I added these plugs actually they'll be tightened down but I put one on here and one on either end of that and um, I think it looks good um, just, uh, you know, again, a little contrast between the black and the orange, but I'm hoping I'm not uh, overdoing it. So uh, let's I'm gonna do a shot with black in there and see how it looks and then decide which way I'm going to go and then let's get that tubed up. So there's a shot of the monsoon with uh, black plugs instead of the orange plugs in them. So what do you think? I think orange is the way to go. 
Uh, I think I'm going to do that. I think it, it adds a little bit extra, just a little bit extra to it. And uh, yeah. All right, so let's get this piece of tubing done on here and uh, do that one first. So it'll be easier to do that and then take the one that comes around. Uh, it's going to be interesting to do this. It's a short little run. And uh, let me get everything tightened up with the plugs and the um, main fittings. And then we'll take these off and uh, get our trusty monsoon tool out and tighten down the inner portion of the fitting, the barb. And then uh, we'll get some tubing in there and, and hopefully we'll be able to close it up real nice and neat. So uh, let's, uh, let's, let me get some tubing measured and cut. Here's something pretty cool. Uh, obviously, the using the top of the uh, monsoon tool to tighten down the plugs. I started them with my fingers, but there are no uh, rough edges. It's a smooth, uh, smooth side on uh, edge on the plug, so uh, you can get them in there pretty well, but your hand tight. And now I'm just doing the extra bit, and then now I got to tighten down the rotary on it and make sure that it's in there well. Let me actually take out this We have the uh, the tubing between the CPU and the chipset installed. Okay, now what we're going to do is put the uh, CPU block in, fitting on. And over here, zoom you out a little bit, do the same thing. All right, we have this tubing loop run here. We have the tube between the CPU block and the chipset. And uh, actually, before I do the GPUs, I'm going to go ahead and do the, the loop from here to here. And then we need to find a fitting to run this guy up to the top. All right, so I got the tubing tacked on here, and I just have it uh, connected here. So if I want to remove it off real quick to get the connections in, I'll do that. And uh, yeah, so I'm in pretty good shape right now. And uh, I guess those of you might be asking why I didn't use an orange fitting here. Remember, there's going to be a ton of orange coolant in that reservoir. So uh, yeah, I didn't go with uh, a bunch of uh, orange fittings and also the monsoon fittings come in this right angle and also the 45 degree um, I could have used the right angle one up here um, but I didn't have an extra one uh, to use I wanted to keep all those here over the motherboard in the main viewing area and I actually have a couple of uh, bits power that I'm using on the Aquero uh, as well uh, those were a little bit easier they're they're a little 
sleeker shape on the one end to be able to get on this block compared to the uh, monsoon. So they, they worked out a little bit better there. So I'm going to have a little mix of uh, two, but the main aesthetic coming in on the motherboard is the contrast between all of the, uh, the uh, cool orange monsoon uh, free center compression fittings uh, and, the, uh, and the orange on the Gigabyte uh, UP7. And so there'll be plenty of orange right here. And then you also have some black and then more of the orange with the uh, radiator and the fan. So it's moving like clockwork. Clockwork orange. Yeah. All right. So now, now it's time to get water blocks on the GTX 680s that are going in this beautiful monster here. And by the way, speaking of uh, monsters, um, a friend of mine, Harry, over at Monster PC uh, on Facebook, you should go over, check it out. Awesome mods, tons of a great community of people uh, helping each other out, sharing knowledge and sharing their custom and modded rigs. Actually, Harry was the one I got the idea for running the white uh, tubing behind um, the motherboard area there to kind of keep it out of the way and not call attention to itself if it was a clear tube with the orange coolant. Uh, so the, the focus is really here on the front of this. So uh, props to Harry for giving me that idea. Um, and again, you guys should check it out. I'll put the link below in the description to uh, get to the Facebook page and check it out. Again, it's a ton of great people and uh, awesome uh, uh, assistance and feedback on stuff. And uh, you learn a lot, too. And there's some guys out there that do some awesome, awesome, uh, awesome work. Uh, so if you're not uh, specialized in it, uh, you got some people that'll do some custom cabling and uh, and all kinds of uh, stuff for you. So uh, check it Before out. Before I move on to the graphics card, one of the things that I did is, um, if you guys haven't, uh, if you go to my Facebook page, Ron's a Nut, I post pictures up as I'm building um, the rig to give you guys uh, a glimpse of how things are coming because sometimes it's a few weeks uh, or longer before I put up videos depending on when I get to actually work on the system. So uh, one of the things I did is I put a shot up of this and uh, uh, one of, one of uh, my followers on Facebook, uh, Callum, um, suggested that I put this inlet on this side. Now, during the first part of the video, I mentioned that I, would, I thought about doing that, but I didn't want the XSPC upside, to be upside down like that is on the, on the water block. Um, but he reminded me that the center block part here actually is separate from this outer trim. So I can actually, this trim is, it can stay like that. I just need to flip the block around. So I'm actually going to do that. Plus, there's a little weird bend in this right here, and I'm not sure why that is. It might be from how I tightened it. So I'm going to uh, uh, do what he suggests. I'm going to flip the block around so the inlet is here first, so the, these don't cross, and then have this short piece on this side. All right? And uh, I think that's going to look better. So that's brilliant. Thanks, Callum. Appreciate the uh, feedback. And for those of you who haven't uh, uh, checked out my Facebook page, uh, please go to Ron's a Nut, and you get to see uh, previews of stuff that I get in for review. And also, uh, as a uh, you know, just sometimes other people will put some pictures up of some of their stuff. And uh, anyway, let me go flip that around. So here you go, uh, taking uh, Callum's suggestion and flipping the race storm. A block around so the in is on this side and also leaving the trim on the outside so you can read XSPC just like I had it's got a nice smooth loop I'm not crossing uh, any tubing and then I got a short run that's perfect going right to the uh, chipset block and uh, what do you think I mean I think that looks pretty good so thanks to Callum this is the uh, final loop order well I say that now we're not done yet are we so yeah, so next up, uh, it's time really now to, uh, we got to get some uh, water blocks on the GTX 680s. So uh, let's do that so that we can stick some 680s in here and, and get some fittings on that and uh, tube this guy up. Uh, I do need to start running some uh, LED uh, uh, now before it starts getting too crowded in there. So um, when I go, well, that'll be coming up here. When I go to put the graphics cards in, I think I got some LEDs that I got to put on those. And then also the Race Storm has uh, points for putting LEDs as well. 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start getting some of the hard to reach um, LED and cabling done uh, so that we can start uh, getting ready to um, do some cable management after we get the water blocks installed. All right. I hope uh, you're liking it so far. It's coming together. All right, now it's time to mount the uh, water blocks on the GTX 680s. And we have uh, two GTX 680s with a couple of XSPC uh, GTX 680 water blocks. They're the Razor, the new Razor style. And uh, I also have a couple of EVGA backplates for these guys. Now, I'm not sure if you can mount these backplates uh, at the same time with the XSPC uh, water block, uh, but we'll find that out. So uh, let me uh, do a, a little unboxing for you and uh, get down to uh, preparing the GPUs, removing the stock coolers and getting ready and mount the, uh, the new ones. All right, so what we have in the box is the instruction sheet. It's a full color sheet, two-sided. Two uh, we get the uh, the water block, some uh, thermal pads, XSPC thermal compound K2, a uh, number of pieces of hardware screws, nuts and bolts, washers and plugs, and uh, two blue LED 3 millimeter cable. Uh, and then uh, it's nice that uh, they're also uh, very well braided. So that's what we get inside the box. Um, before we can install the block, however, we got to first remove the stock cooler off of a GTX 680. So we're going to go ahead and arrange to do that on this and this guy here. Okay, going to go ahead and remove the screws that hold down the blower on the GTX 680 here. We've got to remove this screw. I believe you also have to remove this screw. And then these screws from the back corner. Basically, every screw you see in the back of this card comes off. I believe there's 19 of them. Okay, <clears throat> have all the screws removed, yes, and we wiggle it, give it a little look good, pry, we pull the connector out, the power connector,
All right. And we have the card removed from the stock blower. We'll set that aside for now. And first thing we're going to do is clean off the thermal paste. Some alcohol. Okay, we have the uh, thermal paste removed from that. Next what we do is get the uh, thermal pads ready. blocks all primed and now I'm going to do is lay it right on top and line up right over the, the mounting holes now using the original box as a prop I'm going to lay the block on top of it so they can secure it So I've lined up the holes here. Now this one I have to put on before the back plate, so I'm going to secure that one, kind of line it up. All right, now since I'm using the EVGA back plate. which gets applied this way. I need to uh, remove this coating. And then I need to line up the one the screws that are going to be applied and I've already done this block so I'm going to use this as a guide to which ones going to are going to require these uh, washers. So I have here I have to line these up.
So that's it. Uh, we've got the water blocks, the XSPC Razor water blocks on the GTX 680s. And uh, now we've got to decide how to connect water to it um, and arrange to connect them in SLI, either using the XSPC SLI bridge or Crystal Link or uh, whatever other one looks actually looks good in the case. Um, also, we installed the, the back plate, the optional GeForce GTX 680 backplate from EVGA and I think we got that on there nicely and successfully so let's get it in the case and take a look and see what looks the best and uh, hopefully we did a good job installing that and we'll see uh, later on when the system actually comes up we'll check the temps and see if the uh, application of the thermal paste and the pads is uh, sufficient to keep these guys cool most other 680s that I have underwater, uh, even under load, um, stay like in the 40s. I don't think they've ever gone out in the 40s. So well, we'll see that later on. So let's put it in the case and get an eyeball on how they look. All right, guys. So uh, we've got the Razor blocks on the GTX 680s. And I've got them both installed in there. Uh, one of the things that um, I definitely need to change, though, these are the stock plugs that come with the Razor. I need to change them out. I need to stay uh, coordinated and I didn't think of that when I uh, got these blocks. So um, yeah, so I need to get, uh, I have some monsoon fittings but I need the monsoon plugs that are go that go on here um, to either be black or orange or both. I got to figure that out. Also, um, I'm not going to use the uh, SLI bridge that came with that, uh, that actually it's an option for the uh, razors. It's a little black block that uh, would require the um, card to be in that eight times slot right there, but I want them both at 16 times, so I have them in uh, slots that's one in five, or, and that's the third times 16 slot. So I'm going to um, get an SLI bridge to go in between them. And then the other thing too is I need to go from the top of this block up to here, and I do have some 45 degrees here that are monsoon, but they uh that's going to be a tough angle so i think i'm going to need some something with more rotaries so uh, that's where we're at right now i need to figure those out and i'm going to have to order them so uh i think uh that's going to be it for right now we're going to wrap it up i uh, was able to get it uh, all tubed up i didn't uh, secure this one all the way down because i need to make connections so there's still the uh the wiring of the motherboard and uh, the aquero that has to be done then, of course, all the cable management on the back, the hard disk, uh, the SSDs, all that stuff needs to be done yet. And, uh, and then I do need, you know, then we'll get to filling the loop and checking it all out. But that's for the next videos. So uh, that's it for now. I hope uh, you like how uh, Clockwork Orange is coming along. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for watching. And I uh, hope you please like uh, if you like this and, uh, and favorite. And uh, big thanks again to Performance PCs for providing all these beautiful monsoon fittings. Uh, really, they have been a pleasure to work with. So if you're not using the monsoon fittings, by all means, you guys, if you want to do something different that looks really cool, check it out. There's also a bunch of uh, new monsoon fittings that have some uh, carbon fiber um, built in them that gives you quite a, quite a different look around them, too. So, but go to Performance PCs at uh, www.performancepc.com. Dot com and uh, I put the link in the body of the video so uh, again thanks to performance PCs and uh, also case labs for providing this uh, Merlin SM8 case for me to build uh, this uh, clockwork orange build and uh, that's it thanks for watching